a day of March. I'm going to be your host, Dana Durnford. Hope you're having a great day today. The clashes were violent and widespread. Hundreds of police and anti-nuclear protesters chased each other through the fields and woodland near Vallon. Get some! Get Road some! Blocks were set up to try to prevent <laughs> more some. protesters converging on the area. But at one point, the group managed to block a section of the railway Get line. Some. Fierce protests are expected Get along some. the 700 kilometer route to Germany. The train is the 12th and last shipment of German waste treated in France and then returned to Germany for storage. After Japan's Fukushima disaster, Germany is phasing out its use of nuclear power. Campaigners want France to follow suit, an idea firmly dismissed by President Sarkozy. So Germany shipped her fuel to France to turn it, in, they can turn it into mixed oxide fuel. So that, that administration, before it got phased out, that was an incredibly evil thing to do to humanity, is release the mixed oxide fuel into the environment. The French government, like every government, didn't learn the lesson of Fukushima. Nuclear is dangerous, it's dirty, it's rubbish, it's not renewable energy. According to the pressure group Greenpeace, the shipment of 11 containers holds the same quantity of highly radioactive... But Green Greenpeace won't even acknowledge the buildings look like that. What are you quoting Greenpeace for? That's the problem. Is the law is more important than the future of humanity. So we left off here last night. China conducts ballast water inspections to vessels arriving from Japan. Uh, now, so China, since August the 24th, when the allegedly or started to release water from buildings that don't even exist anymore, been missing for 12 years. So China, there's zero, possi zero possibility China doesn't know it looks like that. It's zero. Zero possibility. Any government on the entire planet doesn't know what it looks like that. It's zero possibility that any professor, any academic on the entire planet doesn't know what it looks like. It's zero. It's zero possibility they don't know what it looks like that. And you know what they're checking in the ballast for? Not uranium, plutonium, and americium, and a thousand other fission products. No. They're checking for tritium. Arnie Gunnison was fed to you, I um, guarantee it. When you first start looking at Fukushima, Arnie Gunnison, Helen Callicott, Christopher Busby, Arnie made the racks for the assemblies that were in the fuel pools at the top of the buildings that don't even exist. He perpetrated that picture instead of the real one. And he's still in business today. <coughs> Finance Minister stresses the safety of seed food consumption despite the concerns about tritium. Listen, the buildings are actually gone, man. The reason all these laws exist is because of the incredible, brutal harm. And then the tritium fable, allegedly, what they're going to be releasing, he said, every year is one sixteenth of the size of that coin. That's all they said has ever got out of these buildings that don't even exist and had millions of pounds. You need to stand up. And the problem is you. You're, you're not speaking out. You're not doing your part. You don't understand how important your voice is. If you know, you're probably one of the most important people on the planet. If you know the truth. And if I haven't taught you how to tell the truth after all these years, then I've failed miserably. Every sense of the word. My whole life has been a waste. If you can't articulate at this stage what the issue is, and if you don't understand the significance of it, the importance of it, and the dire consequences of not having a conversation, who does? 
Russia's ways ban. Do you think for one second, for even a billionth of a second, Russia doesn't know it looks like that? Because Taiwan, South Korea, China, and including Russia, Malaysia, Indonesia, many other Asian countries, are perpetrating that lie as of July the 13th of this year, the story changed to 2.2 grams of tritium, and 0 0.06 of it is what they're going to be releasing into the ocean each year for 30 years. So they're saying out of the millions of pounds in that building, and the millions of pounds in that building, the millions of pounds in reactor two, and the millions of pounds missing in reactor one, only their official story now is 2.2 grams, not, not even a pound, not even a kilogram. And that's what they're up to. They picked up 60 million bags where they're growing food to. Just Fukushima Prefecture is one of those markers I put for you there. There were 14 prefectures that were banned by 55 countries for a decade because nobody mentioned tritium. You don't pick up 30 million one-ton bags of tritium. The media has taken great pleasure in cutting your throats, disarming you, making you incapable. If you've been here a long time, you're in the know and you're needed. You're part of the war. You need to get busy. If I could do it, you can do it, okay? And probably better. I had to learn everything. Just that's, that's all you do is try and you'll figure it out. It's much easier to do now than it used to be. This model is 19.6 days of the radioactive plume covering the entire planet. The official story is only one sixteenth of that kind will get out over the next, not over the last 12 years, but over the next 12 months. The official story is nothing got out. So how do you account for 30 million one-ton bags and total destruction then? Well, just don't. And, and who is orchestrating this whole propaganda? No less than the International Atomic Energy Agency has coordinated with every government, university, media worldwide to regurgitate the exact same narrative since August the third or July the thirteenth, twenty twenty three. So last night we had a poll. Got a dismal twenty seven votes. We've been ostracized from live streaming worldwide. Not by rules and regulations, but by deceit and dishonesty, hacking or whatever you want to call it. Lobbyists, I don't know, but we can't stream anywhere. After 10 years of streaming, on August the 24th, that was... Should nuclear academics and scientists, also known as terrorists, because that's what a scientist is, it's a terrorist. Proved or not. <laughs> you can't win the battle with me, I can tell you that much. The evidence I got is incontestable, it's unassailable. These are terrorists. And nuclear students are the future terrorists. Shouldn't they work at Fukushima someday? Somebody said, two people said no. Like, no, I'm a nuclear student. My, my, my kid's a nuclear student. You can't send him there, Dana. That's where your children are supposed to go. We need more of this. Bring it to them. Don't wait for them to beat you up. Get on it. Get your helmets, your elbow pads, your shoulder pads, your knee pads from your local sporting store. When you go to protest, bring what they're going to give it to you. The nuclear industry is going to attack you. How can you stress the safety of food consumption from... Endless mo multiple nuclear meltdowns. And call yourself a human then. How does that actually work? How can he call himself a human? How can there be that big of a disconnect that they call themselves a human? For now, people can consume seafood without having to be worried and will closely monitor the situation that disappeared 12 years ago. We are 
There's so much scum and so few good people on the planet. And the good people on the planet don't have the confidence to come out and bark back, push back against the nuclear industry. We're in real trouble. The loud, the loud anti-nuclear movements are the controlled opposition. It's mm -hmm. them. Russia weighs a ban on Japanese seafood imports, and Russia's in on it too. Don't worry, the, the same narrative, the release, water, these are lethal doses we're talking about. You're pouring, when you're pouring water over the reactor cores, it's picking up fuel particulates. This is lethal to everything with replicating cells, and particularly you. And oh, Russia's going to check for tritium, they didn't find any, so... Have a nice day. Russia could join China in banning the seafood. Like, seafood's the last thing I'm worried about. I don't want to go and buy rice and feed it to my children because they're going to end up with leukemia. You know what leukemia does to children? It ain't fucking pretty. Which includes assessing tritium levels. The ultimate insult. The ultimate, the incredibly op ultimate insult is Russia's looking for a tritium. You know, Russia the boogeyman, right? That everybody country has embargoes against is still going to play ball with the nuclear industry. No, 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 we'll work with you. Yeah, and they got Durnford there beating you up. You'll be okay. We'll just make him disappear like every other buddy that has a conscience. Fukushima water release. Russia could ban Japanese seafood imports after China. Do not dump the tritium into the ocean. You got hundreds of thousands of protesters worldwide protesting something that happened 12 years ago and is infinitely worse than tritium. I was trying to, I was trying to wrap my mind around this picture. You, you can't go into the pump house, which is on the seaside of the reactors downhill from that in other words that's right behind these these are right alongside the ocean this is the pump house and this is we got fuel assemblies went through the roof of the bloody place you you don't go in there and i'm trying to wrap my mind around the whole picture what am i looking at what you got in them bags is that boots or something one guy couldn't even find his bag, and so he got boots. So every one of these bags is yellow boots, yellow like the Japanese. They're wearing paper suits and uh, pointless respirators. You can't filter something that is so small. You can put 200 million of them, isotopes on the head of a needle. You can't see it, but each one is incapable of and more than capable of inflicting serious long-term harm to your immune system. And ultimately, decades down the road, your body will build a tumor around it. What have they got laid on the road? Like, you can't go in the structure. And when you look at what's at the end of where there are two behind them, you can't go in the building. That building was flooded and still is every day because it's slightly downhill from these creatures. And that assemblies from the reactor fuel pools, there's two at the top of each building, went up and some of it went right down through the roof of that pump house. There's nothing you can do there. Why they got they got the scaffolding normally means you're you're doing something. What are you doing there 12 years later? Now they build it, right, to give you the illusions that things are happening. They were saying they burned 7,000 paper suits every day at the incinerators. Now they have two. They have a great big shiny brand new one to burn radioactive material. And all you're doing is releasing radiation back into the environment. They're only doing that so they don't have to store it. Every nuclear plant has an incinerator. Every nuclear power plant has a mile of pipeline running into the ocean that daily they're allowed to release 
the byproduct of the fuel because nobody's paying attention. There's nobody paying attention. There's no checks and balances. Zero. And they have sealed everybody's and the 8 million species' feet. It's time to fight back. You got nothing to lose, that's for sure. Speaking of losers, counterpunch. <sighs> By the way, that's the stump, the ghost of reactor three. And the ghost of reactor three I'm just going to get this right before I jump. Because uh, um, the majority of these stories, by the way, are very difficult stories to try to explain. The people that are trying to maneuver you in the complacency are very eloquent. They're very good at telling their lies. And we've been covering examples of it since the beginning of time, it feels like. He said, the fuel is stored in pools on the top floors of the reactor buildings, 30 meters above the ground. Thirty meters above the ground. The fuel is stored on top of the buildings. And uh, this is just some of the many, 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 many Western medias, including the United Kingdom, have proposed that they are on the top of the buildings in the fuel pools that this wanker is talking about. 90 meters above the ground. And they're, they're way above it looking down at the fuel pool on a building that doesn't exist. A nuclear meltdown. So why isn't the world actingly, acting appropriately and calling them scumbags from the rooftops worldwide? The fuel is still stored in pools on the top floor 30 meters above the ground, with the exception of Unit 3, where the removal of which was completed in 2019. That's Reactor 3 over there. There is no top to the building. There, there is no fuel pools. There were... They were, and which is quite interesting, because they were, that was the mixed oxide fuel facility. The insidious, monstrous, deadly, lethal, diabolical, the only way you can describe mixed oxide fuel. That once you take, if you did survive the whole cycle and it was in a fuel pool, the emissions are, are, are insidious because it's still splitting atoms, but it's already gone through a chain reaction the first time. Now it's gone through a chain reaction the second time, which is truly the worst thing humanity can experience. The buildings and the reactors themselves where the decommissioning and dismantling work will take place are highly radioactive. It can't be easily, easily. You can't penetrate. The workers are the homeless, by the way. You can't go to work and penetrate buildings that are lethal doses everywhere. And so pe people that write these kinds of lies, I think they should lose both arms anyway. As soon as they publish a lie that big, then it should be legal. The government should be forced to, to cut their arms off. And, and their parents should have to do it. The true extent of the accident is not known. Really? You mean a, an academic can't extrapolate, or an engineer can't extrapolate anything from that? Really? And I can't challenge every single lie because every paragraph is whacked full of lies. <sighs> Time of ro robots can't survive, and if they did, they can't see nothing because the reactor core is detonated. Like, do you really think all the mainstream media is pretending they're in the fuel pool on a building that don't exist because it's harmless, because it's not a planet killer? Do you think that the public relations firms are claiming there's 2.2 grams of tritium in the thousands of tanks, the th the, which are empty, were built to, in 2013 to manipulate you and coerce you into giving up your future and your loved one's futures and 
the future of the species and humanity, which, you know, anybody that's never spoken up, don't ever say you like a birds. Don't ever say you think life is pretty because you obviously don't believe it or you would be reacting to this incredible nightmare that is perpetrated because of your silence. So there's a significant risk of a collapse in the event of a strong earthquake if the 440-ton vessel collapsed. If this pool is damaged, even partially, another major... So if, if the million pound, the million pound uh, vessel was to collapse and hit the fuel pool and damage it, it could be a catastrophic event. But it, it won't because the, the pools are already gone, moron. Well, they know the difference. They're, they're not, you can't, you can't tell this lie like they told unless you know it's gone. You, you have to be able to, right? So this is the new official story, I guess, is what we're seeing right there from Counterpunch today. He said there's 90 tons of contaminated water being added to the tanks every day. So you, the reactors normally need a million uh, gallons a minute, 4,500 tons a minute poured to keep this thing from running out of control. And officially 90 tons, so a garden hose is about 140, uh, like a 3.8 garden hose, is about 140 tons a day. 140 tons a day of water through your anybody's garden hose, your standard Walmart, whatever, garden hose, is about a 3.8 inch. So they got a 3.8 inch hose, garden hose, it's split four ways. It's take a garden hose, split four ways. One part goes there, one part goes there, the other part goes to reactor two, the other one goes to reactor three. That's what they're saying. 90 tons sounds like a lot of water, but, but for a garden hose, uh, add another 50 tons. So they're using something half the size of a garden hose on four reactors, is what they're saying. And they're claiming that they got wells there, they're, they're pumping water out of the basement, is actually what they're saying. And the water goes through a filtration system where it's at a lethal dose per liter. If you walk over the hose, you're going to get a lethal dose, by the way, before it gets to the, f the so even if the filter did work, you couldn't walk over the hoses. There's not, we, I don't know if we've ever caught them telling the truth. Because if they tell you that tritium is coming out of this building and you don't smack them in the mouth, there's something wrong with you. Why don't you send your child down there to work on Fukushima? Because you know I'm right. The International Atomic Energy Agency, which is not an authority, it's not, it's not a regulatory agency. Their job is to promote nuclear. Since 1958, that's been their mandate by their owner, their, their puppeteers, which is the United Nations, which is 195 militaries, which is completely out of control. The International Atomic Energy Agency dispatched a team of experts to investigate whether the radioactivity levels of contaminated water treated by TEPCO, treated by a operator that is not a, a builder, they're not an authority, they're not a decommissioning expert. And they were nationalized right away, which means the government, because they were on the stock market and went broke right away, flatlined, we should say. And then they have to be consumed by the, con the countries as hosting that corporate personhood, which is not supposed to exist. The corporate personhood is a fictitious um, entity with human rights that were piggybacked in 
on the slavery laws by constitutional lawyers from the United States with no opposition. And so because they have certain human rights, they're known as corporate personhood, which is illegal because you can't do that on the back of the slavery. And because there was no descending voices, nobody's challenged the law. There were, I, I know one person out there who said they were going to law school and we've done radio interviews on a number of occasions with this trader who said they were going to law school in the air to be a constitutional lawyer to challenge that benchmark of constitution, which spilled over into the democratic, like Canada's Bill of Rights or the United, St or United Kingdom's um, And and now they're out of control, and now they're they're a bigger threat to our planet than a meteorite. On the basis of the report from the International Atomic Energy Agency, that there was only two point two grams of only two point two grams that got out of buildings that don't even exist anymore. That's what the International Atomic Energy Agency is the coordinator of that whole story. They're the worst thing can happen to a planet. So this person starts off with a massive lie that the fuel pools in Reactor 3 was um, the fuel out of the pool, of all places, out of the pool, which are around 12 reactor cores. And that many is stored there because you don't have a repository anywhere in the world, let alone Japan, to handle the, the four decades of fuel production, the fuel cycle. Because nuclear power is about fuel cycle. The fuel cycle is about claiming plutonium, producing plutonium in order to make the weapons that you can't use and that poisons everything ultimately from the emissions of trying to produce it. And, and so what the hell kind of picture is this? Gave its okay. They don't own the Pacific Ocean or Atlantic Ocean and planet Earth. Maybe they do. Look at them. However, the regulatory committee, they're not a regulatory committee. They don't have any authority over any country on the entire planet. They don't have any sovereignty over any country on the entire planet. They're a corporate personhood, part of UN, which is a military-industrial complex, formerly known as the League of Nations, pre-Hiroshima and Nagasaki. What is the International Nuclear Lobby? They're the, the, the most degenerate scum we found on this planet. They're the biggest threat to humanity in the 8 million species. The nuclear issue is globally interwoven. Inter no, it's really interesting because you've got many, 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 you got 80 years of this edit control industry that its original inception was mass secrecy. And they had tens of thousands of spies spying on the scientists, and he had tens of thousands of more spies spying on the spies, and he had tens of thousands of more spies spying on those spies. That's how secretive. Do you think they all gave up and went away after Hiroshima and Nagasaki? You think that they, they're not the legacy we're looking at today, and the reason why we have no future is because you didn't hold them accountable? Cannot be managed by a single country. Why not? What kind of idiotic statement is that? Without civilian nuclear energy, there's no military use of technology. Korea, so, uh, North Korea is a single country. Russia is a single country. Without civilian nuclear energy, no military use of the technology. Without military use, there's no civilian nuclear energy. Macron, the French, former French president, uh, what a betrayal these people turn out to be every single time. Every single administration has an evil agenda and they got four years to pull it off till the next evil sack of shit gets in to the administration. During a visit to Framatones, La Cruz sought facility in December 2020. 
The real politic of the atomic bomb led to the creation of international atomic energy in 48, the five nuclear weapon states and the UN Security Council. Security Council. The arrogance of these people, they call themselves something like that, promoted nuclear energy for peace. There is no peaceful nuclear energy. The emissions are always lethal, everything with replicating cells, and encouraged this development in order to monopolize the nuclear weapons. And they made the International Atomic Energy Agency a nuclear supervisory agency, which is just UN, to ensure no other country produced atomic bombs. Which is, that's mafia, right? Only we are allowed to poison the planet and the 8 million species. The UN member states were deceived by Eisenhower's fine sounding words, atoms for peace. Atom. And I despise with every fiber of my body that statement, atoms for peace. It's the last thing. Peace can never be achieved with atoms, anthropogenic man made atoms. We call them man made because they're not created by the sun. We don't find them in the solar system. They're unique. And then that means that nothing on the planet has an autoimmune trigger to defend against it. And when, uh, when, or oh when, or oh when, is enough going to be enough? The entire planet should be gone to war against the nuclear industry. At some point, they've got no choice. They're going to have to. And now, now is the actual time on top of that. The International Atomic Energy Agency controls nuclear energy throughout the world, but they don't have the authority. They don't have sovereignty over any country, so therefore that's a complete fake statement. Again, putting the International Atomic Energy Agency, it's like your neighbor comes over to your house every other day and says he wants this and he wants that, and you say, no, no, that's mine, and then they take a baseball bat and hit you with it and they take it and walk away. And that happens for the rest of your life. That's the International Atomic Energy Agency to the 8 million species. But this international organization, which is a military industrial complex, it's best described as a misery machine, is neither objective nor impersonal, nor does it conform absolute to scientific truth. So, like, the, this author tried to write a lot of good stuff, and did but put so many lies in there, just the, if, you know, if you're in the know, your reaction should be you want to kick the shit out of them if you ever see them. A despicable, disgusting, parasitic example of a human. Nucle uh, the International Atomic Energy Agency is constantly working to promote nuclear energy. The effects of the radiation are grossly underestimated, and the database on which the International Atomic Energy Agency relies is that of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, collected by the Atomic Bomb Casualty Commission, and we've covered them many, many times. They only studied external doses, not internal doses. And the laws are so many and so exorbitant, I can't possibly sit here and go through it without screaming for the rest of it. So I'm just going to skip through it. You can read through this disaster and the massive amount of lies that he interweaves with the story is despicable. It's despicable. I think their parents should be put in jail for the rest of their life too. And the story first appeared in Beyond Nuclear. Of all people, the scums of the earth themselves. Big surprise. And the author is the anti-nuclear activist with a group called Eco Exchanges, who apparently has no concept that the buildings are gone, which is absolutely impossible that the author doesn't know that. But he has a big anti-nuclear organization And one of the first, he started off one of the biggest lies imaginable. The fuel is still stored, still stored, still stored in buildings that don't exist, are they? And, and the big problem is they can't win a debate, so they'll never have one. 
U.S. nuclear introduction of revolutionary rad waste treatment techniques. For goodness sakes, don't believe these monsters. Enables them to sell more radiation detectors with that fable. You can't, like, you can put 200 million of these atoms on the head of a needle. How are you going to filter that? How are you going to filter one of those atoms? Like, you can't filter it. it ha everything has to be contained. That's the only way you can separate these atoms is you can't. So you have to contain everything. And that's why every nuclear power plant has a pipeline directly into the ocean and a incinerator. An incinerator. No radiation substances found in fish after Fukushima water release, really. Look at the little chicken next chugging along on their heels. So this doesn't exist. The only thing that exists now is the newest, greatest law, tritium. Get your tritium, check. Get your treated water, check. Got more tritium, check. The Japanese Fisheries Agency confirmed that tritium, tritium, this is a fishery agency, confirmed that tritium wasn't found in the fish off the coast of multiple ongoing, never-ending nuclear meltdowns that have lost inventories that dwarfs all nuclear meltdowns combined worldwide in each of the buildings is equal to far exceeding all nuclear accidents worldwide. Russia considers banning Japanese, because they had fuel pools at the top of the buildings. Each building had two fuel pools with four decades of reactor cores. It's around 10 reactor cores, 12 reactor cores per building that's gone through a chain reaction that are still splitting the atoms until they went kaboot. Russia considers banning the Japanese seafood import. Why wouldn't you ban the food from the country? Why would you, why would you talk about seafood? What you should be talking about is there's 14 prefectures were banned by 55 countries for a decade, which means that ain't never going away. That ain't never stopping. And the arrogance of these people to grow food right alongside of one-ton bags if the, of radiation, if that doesn't terrify you, you're missing some serious chromosomes. Japan started releasing the water l last month? Really? So you're saying they don't have 30 million one-ton bags? They didn't do that for a decade, pick them up? These buildings didn't melt down? Why shouldn't I kick your fucking teeth down your throat if I ever met you, I wonder? Japan explains Fukushima nuclear plant decommissioning at the International Atomic Energy Agency. <laughs> I thought I was supposed to go the other way. The, the despicable, disgusting, parasitic Japanese government explained progress in the decommissioning work for the meltdown stricken, meltdown stricken, meltdown stricken. So 30 million one-ton bags Oh, that's meltdown stricken, Dan. Yeah? 30 million one ton bags, four melted reactors, eight missing fuel pools, China syndrome, catastrophic plumes covering the entire planet. I'm not upset, I'm desperate. Which, so we can have a future. I'm desperate so the world can fight, come up with solutions. Despite the fact we're 12 years behind the curveball, at some point we're going to have to do what I'm saying. That's the only way forward. At some point, that's the way you're going to go. The plumes covered the entire planet in around 20 to 30 days, and all the national models from all the major countries and shakers and movers and institutions. Over 65% of 
Taiwanese are worried about Fukushima release. That's been going on for 12 years. Did anybody bother tell them that? Did, see, they bought into the August the 24th fable that they're going to start releasing it. Like, this is 2013. Media, the American Western media, pretending they're in a building that don't exist. That's 2013, 2014. They've done that. And that's been official narrative. Now it's tritium, 2.2 grams. And so 60% of Taiwanese are firmly brainwashed. 85% of the South Koreans are firmly brainwashed or protesting tritium. Same thing with China. Anybody that's, everybody knows the word tritium all of a sudden. Here's the official flowing, the flowing. See all the steel rusted sheets there? In the lower part of the screen. That's the water flowing out of the empty tanks. Like if you fill up the tanks at Fukushima with the water poured over reactor cores, you can only build one tank and you can't get back on the site once you finish filling that up or a quarter of it or, or a tenth of it up. <sighs> You're in real trouble, planet. My goodness, please wake up. And, and they're doing this over by reactor five and six. Now remember, pictures got released in in the um, beginning of 2020. There were 736 pictures. I got a play, uh, an entire video on my playlist on those pictures that were from a drone. And the drone sh had, was very high quality. And so when I zoomed in, all the reactors, except for reactor five, and the, uh, were pixelated, every facet of it. Reactor 1, Reactor 2, Reactor 3, Reactor 4, the common spent fuel pool, Reactor 6, the stacks of all these reactors, and the pump houses were all redacted and pixelated. So um, reactors, uh, common spent fuel pool was at the same height right behind Reactor 4. And so this contraption It's right out in front of reactor six, and those pictures were redacted. And nobody's else ever covered those pictures, only me. How can you call buildings that don't exist crippled? How can you call buildings that covered the planet in massive, just horrific uh, radioactive fallout crippled? Anybody that does that should be crippled, shouldn't they? Several groups on the island voiced opposition. Well, South Korea had hundreds of thousands of people protesting in the streets day after day after day. Tritium, don't let the tritium to the ocean. Please don't let tritium. <laughs> I want my kids to have a future. Why aren't they holding pictures of that and saying, what the fuck are you talking about, tritium? You piece of shit. Because that's what I'd be doing. Should I print out a whole bunch of these large like that? And then we can ship them to protesters? When we find out there's a protesting upcoming about nuclear, we'll ship them these pictures and spot, pin the tail on the tritium. <laughs> I gotta lose my mind. Let me get off that. Japan Fukushima cools in solar energy. Ah, solar energy. You don't know what's going on. Nuclear is coming. Small modular reactors are gonna be wonderful for the nuclear industry. Although Mayer said he did not have the power to ban new projects. He'd create laws that would make their lives miserable. Ghost towns and ghost towns. Nuclear so carbon free. Local animal life would also suffer from a loss of a habitat. Good God, man. 
you're in the nuclear wasteland. You got to go past millions of one-ton bags of radiation every day to shoot your shit at the sh at the shops and barber shops. You, like, how can you be that delusional anyway? And we've seen the extremes where they're taking water bottles and putting them in boxes at the primary schools, for instance, and they're stacking them inside and outside the school to shield the students from the gamma shines in the yard. It drops the dose down by about a third, Dana. It's pretty cool. Wait, why don't you get them out of there, moron? Just moron. Why don't you evacuate them, moron? It's just spineless idiot. You moron idiots. You actual idiots. Like someone says they're pro-nuclear, then you, you have an obligation to call them an idiot. Fukushima is following in the footsteps. <laughs> Fukushima City is a nuclear wasteland, for goodness sakes. Every house there is entitled to be decommissioning decommission or uh, decontaminated if you can find enough homeless and destitute and victims of society and the immigrants don't speak the language because academics and corporations are not going to do it. 5,000 homes will be switched to geothermal energy free of charge here in Canada. You can save 50% of your electricity doing it. No heart attacks, no cancers, no diabetes, no Down syndromes. Pretty cool stuff. Philippines Lopez Group to pour a billion dollars in germal, uh, geothermal energy. Why did you wait so long? Why, why did you wait so long is the only question. It's only been around for over 100 years. It's so stupid and easy to do. Why are we waiting? Forty new wells or so, give or take a hundred. Southwest Utah to house the world's largest next generation geothermal energy project. We'll deliver four hundred megawatts, a uh, hundred a megawatt will power a thousand homes. Carbon free electricity. Every time I heard the word carbon free I want to strangle People like Moyles, Allen, or James Hansen. Carbon freeze is about, you can't have any trees or plants or insects without carbon, stupid. Mo just morons. It's the cover story for nuclear, see? CKW plans geothermal development in Switzerland. Switzerland such scumbags. They shouldn't get geothermal. Give them fuckers nuclear. Let them die. The target formation of geothermal production will be a shell limestone layer at a depth of around 3,750 meters. And once it's done, you walk away, come back in a couple hundred years, build another one. When it's finished, turn that on and turn that one off. And that's too stupid. That's, it works. That's, we can't have that. That don't make any sense. It works. It's cheap. It works. It's stupid. Anything as good as nuclear. There's lots of side jobs. Kill people in the hospitals. Kill them at their, all the farms that are surrounding them. It's great. Geothermal energy is going to put you out of business. We'll stabilize energy and retail prices throughout the year. I just, like, I'm ashamed to be a human sometimes. This is Canada. They're going to grow 23,000 pounds of strawberries a day with geothermal in minus 40 temperatures in Alberta. You ever been to Alberta? Like, it's really interior, high altitude. Like, you, you can't go out the door without, you know, a scarf around your nose and your mouth because they'll freeze. So 23,000 pounds of strawberries a day. That's pretty impressive with geothermal. Way to go, geothermal. You kick ass. I 
I'm, I'm impressed, I gotta say. New study just says geothermal potential across the whole of Singapore. The whole planet is geothermal. There's several billion times the energy we consume right now under our feet. It's so simple. It's so good. It's so good for the environment. So wonderful. It makes roses smell better, by the way. Found that the heat from a depth of four to five kilometers uh, would be suitable for power generation. A lot of places you don't have to go that deep. Imagine if universities start helping us develop technology. Like every university works on nuclear, almost none work on geothermal. Mercury announces plan for a 50 megawatt geothermal plant expansion. It's happening, folks. Uh, $130 million for 50 megawatts. Each megawatt is a thousand homes. So the price is half. That came down in half since the last time, it was last year or something, we've been using the numbers from last year a lot. We had five, th five million dollars a megawatt. But then it's free forever after, right? Just the regular cheap maintenance. Now it's down almost half for a megawatt. So, if you got two point six million dollars, and you live in a town of uh, fifty thousand, uh, geez, well, a lot more than that, five hundred thousand people. What was the size of that thing? Fifty megawatts. That's f uh, fifty thousand people, rather. So, if you got fifty thousand people, two point six million dollars. Will power everybody's home for the next hundred years. So everybody chips in and does that. And then after a few years, their bills are like five dollars, ten dollars a month. So fifty-five thousand households for two point six million dollars per. I'm sorry, two point six million dollars per thousand. I screwed up. Everybody all excited. So 130 million will power 55 million people for the next 100 years. And so 55,000 households paying $300 a month won't take long to get your money back. So if you have a, a solar flare, take out all the reactors worldwide, and the fuel pools, everything melts down that day. Worldwide, that's it. This won't be fit for millions of years to come back to. And a, and a solar flare is a very real possibility. Nuclear testing, Marshall Islands devastation, focus of new art exhibit, University of Hawaii News. Yeah, you know, once once you hear the word Hawaii, well, too bad. I thought, I thought it was a good story. I didn't even mention the word university. They're the quickest one to gut you and leave you on the side of the road to bleed out as a uh, university or academic. First off, there's, there's something really important everybody should remember about here, um, the Marshall Islands. There's too many to mention, right? And I, I really do need to do a whole presentation just on it. If you didn't take down my other site when we were looking for spiders, I can tell you to go watch the video, but let me see, Marshall Islands. Where would that be? Right there, I guess. 2019 study. The radiation contaminated today in 2019 over a million square kilometers is severely impacting the habitability of the radioactive wasteland. A million square kilometers. 
You know, the Castle Bravo that they set off was equal to over a thousand Nagasaki, because Nagasaki was a plutonium bomb, is equal to over a thousand Nagasaki. They actually atomized and aerosoled, ionized and radiated several islands with these nuclear disease factories they call weapons. And look what they've done to your kid, a sponge. They pumped that down every kid's throat in schools and theaters and everywhere else. Till the kid was like, Spongebob. Every time I heard the word Spongebob or bikini, I think of the horror, the absolute horror. They, they, the nuclear industry destroyed all the beautiful atolls in the oceans. You know, the paradise is the... The, the ice, isolated as it can possibly be on the planet. Just absolutely pristine, stunning, just unbelievable life. Nuclear industry, we can't have that. Goodbye, Bikini Atolls, Marshall Islands. Goodbye, French Polynesians. And the French Polynesians, what the French done to them was equal to detonating a Nagasaki bomb every week for 11 years. I'm sorry, 12 years. What the British done to Christmas Island and the Mono, uh, Monte, Montebello and Mon, uh, Mon, gee, I can't even pronounce it now. Montebello and Marilinga, which is still too contaminated to visit today, obviously, and for another couple of hundred thousand years. All the best and most beautiful and magical and wonderful and just absolutely privileged to, to experience. <laughs> they would have nuked that beyond any capacity imaginable. I mean, when you look at the Bikini Atoll, it's still over a million square miles, kilometers, too radioactive. And then they get use these cartoons like The Simpsons and SpongeBob and Spider-Man and the Hulk to, to make sure you and your loved ones when you grew up would be thoroughly indoctrinated and capable of rationalizing the danger. Who taught marine biology before switching to an amination? So he, he got a job to, to protect the environment, allegedly, right? In the ocean. And then decided to destroy everybody and the ocean at the same time. Oh, yeah, this is uh, Castle Bravo. Was equal to a thousand, not Hiroshima, because that was a uranium bomb, it was equal to a thousand. Nagasaki bombs, because that was a plutonium bomb. And, and there is a big difference. Vaporizing islands. No, you atomized an aerosol and ionized and radiated it. You turned it into a weapon and, that, and radioactive fallout. You didn't leave behind the radioactive contamination only. The plumes covered the entire planet. And there's still a million square miles, kilometers there today. I believe that's the Castle Bravo shot. Look at all the rings. The Soviet Union, when they set off, yeah, that is Castle Bravo. When the Soviet Union set off, their biggest bomb was 50 megatons, I believe. The Taser bomb or something stupid. Uh, that was equal to 3,800. Nagasaki bombs going off at the one time. 3,800. It broke windows 700 miles away. Like Finland or, or Norway or Sweden. I can't remember. People got burnt uh, like 200 miles away or something. So it would incinerate every creature within 100 miles of it. But it was equal to 3,800 Nagasaki bombs worth of radioactive fallout. Isn't that a nuclear war? If Russia and, and NATO, the disgusting, cowardly creature known as NATO, which should have been disbanded because it was built in response to the Soviet Union, when they, when they destroyed the country and everybody's patents and pensions, then NATO should have went and been deep six at the same time. Like all the aged orange they dumped off the coast of Canada.
bikini's not a bear, it's a bathing suit, or the home is SpongeBob with square pants. So this com company, beer company down in Texas, if I remember correctly, has different types of beer. They got plutonium 239. So, but anyway, so when people try to look up 239, they find beer instead of the dead dogs, dead animals from the millions and millions and millions of experiments they've done. And let me show you what plutonium-239 is actually really like. Because it's really good, it's really cute. And by the way, the biggest byproduct of radiated fuel rods is curium isotopes. And curium isotopes, you need lead shielding 20 times thicker than you do for plutonium, but don't don't underestimate plutonium just yet. 144 dogs were given one inhalation. These were beagle dogs because they, they got big noses, I guess. And they're the, the best ones to kill. The puppies are loving. They're not aggressive, see? Tumors of the lungs, the skeleton liver, occurred beginning about three years after the plutonium exposures. The bone tumors found in 93 dogs were the most common cause of death. And lung tumors in 46 dogs were the second most common death. And liver tumors. But having three tumors, so like, to put two thirds plutonium on your beer, or Hoppenheimer, and Half-Life, the arrogance, and the Bikini Atoll, did they go to the Bikini Atoll? Do they donate some of the sales to the victims at Bikini Atoll who have jelly babies? The problem is we let scum exist without holding them accountable. I do my best to hold them accountable. And I'll admit I'm not the nicest person when it comes to the nuclear industry. You wouldn't be either if you had the archive and the history that I have with this industry. You would be just like me. I guarantee it. Nuclear traces in turtle shells. The guy who done this study, I, I absolutely hate his guts. Remember Bert the Turtle? Duck and cover, duck. And cover, count your down till you did. Duck, duck, duck. No, that's not, <laughs> that's not the way it went. Dana, you're thinking of another one. <laughs> <coughs> I hate his guts, the guy who done this study. I'm not even going to look at it. So instead of using, you know, recently desist turtles, he went to a museum. And then he used that as quantification. So he's looking at external doses only. He wasn't looking at internal doses. And he was by no way suggesting the turtles were harmed by it. The opposite of what a human would actually try to do. Conservationists didn't want to write the obituary of the ocean. I, I already done that on six years of research expeditions. And I'll be doing it again tomorrow if the weather's good and the tides are right. So I was a professor at the University of California. Well, have a nice day, man. That's, I don't need to know anything about you. That's enough for me to say, go fuck yourself. That really is, right? We, we know you're just a piece of shit. That's guaranteed a piece of shit. If you're a former professor, and you're out there promoting lies, you're, you have all the attributes of a sack of shit. <coughs> Death from everywhere, that's the nuclear industry. A scholar was sentenced to life in a Chinese jail because she understood what the truth was. And this is their normal tactic. If they can't, if they can't get rid of you, then they'll find a way to get rid of you. Sends a life in a Chinese prison. 
It's a cruel tragedy. It is so. She's one of more than 400 prominent academics, writers, performers, artists who advocated groups, say or detain in Zheng Zheng. Oh, Pol Pot, uh, he killed everybody that was smart with an education. Get rid of them first. All the universities, academics, got to go. And so at the end of it, they were killing anybody with glasses because they looked smart. Musicians, anybody with any kind of influence were wiped out in the first wave. That's what nuclear does, right? That's the only reason it exists today. If it didn't do it, it couldn't exist, see? The targeted intellectuals is a way to dilute or even erase the culture and identity of the victims. She was born and that and they just want to erase it from history, which was like a medieval thing, but yet here we are. And China, of course, now super evil. Back to the future, the hype around small modular nuclear, there is no hype. There's an attempt to create a hype, but you, you don't even have a design into the regulatory agencies which takes like five years process to be approved, but then they got to do all the patchwork and fixings and re-engineering to make it work. You got to build a test reactor. That's going to take you 10 or 15 years to get the kinks out of all of that before you can start production. And then just to start production, you got to build an incredible facilities. You got to hire a stupid amount of people. There's not something you can just walk off the street and work out. It's it's another fable. Anything to stop you from coming up with solutions like geothermal storage. This week, the latest chapter of federal government analyst was released, estimating the replacement of Australia's coal-fired power station with 71 small modular reactors would cost 387 billion. For less than half of that, you can do the whole, well, it's less than half of that. One quarter of that, you can do the whole country for geothermal. And it'll be finished long before the small modular reactors, which don't exist. So, like, re the replacement of the Australia coal fire power stations, that narrative showed up a couple of years ago. At, but the year before that, the narrative was geothermal, could replace gas, oil, coal, and nuclear plants. Nuclear industry like, oh shit, we gotta get in on this hype. And that's why you've seen that narrative. And and the pro-nuclear community in Australia, which is incredibly influential, incredibly powerful, and like everywhere else, just disgusting sacks of shit. Just lethal to humanity pieces of shit. That's Chernobyl, Chernobyl. So that's pretty bad, Dana. Yeah. yeah, but it was a graphite reactor. It's brand new. It didn't have any fuel pools. These reactors are completely gone. There's nothing left. The fuel pool, it had two fuel pools at the top of each building that were stuffed with reactor cores because they don't have a repository anywhere on the planet, let alone Japan. Neither confirm nor deny it tells a real life tale of spies, nukes, and Howard Hughes. Again, we go back, the legacy of the nuclear industry was just secretive, uh, like Manhattan Project for most people is a famous um, entity of that era, right? Those people didn't give up their jobs after Hiroshima and Nagasaki. They didn't give up their secrecy, uh, and by that, right, the, well, you know, we, we need billions of dollars. We can't tell the Canadians or the Americans because it's a secret, George. Oh, that's right. Here you go. They don't know how much money the government got. And so this industry, 90% of the money for the nuclear industry goes to administration, not infrastructure. That's why it's so enormously expensive. And it's also why the nuclear industry can't exist. It'll, it'll never be like a renaissance because it it's after generations and generations of the inbreeding, the only thing they're good at is looting. That's why they're getting the education so they can loot 
the money from the industry that is thrown around freely. I actually know people that grew up, went to university to get the education. I knew them when they were young. So they can get a job in the system so they can loot it. <clears throat> so they get a blank checkbook with no auditors. So the Soviet submarine K-129, <coughs> they were Howard Hughes and the government, they wanted that submarine, it sank, and they wanted to bring it to the surface and study the technology, the Soviet's technology, because they were incompetent themselves. See? <coughs> and when, it, when you read about today, it's all propaganda, it's pointless. But a submarine sank with nukes on it, again, basically, is the story today. Israel Netanyahu at UN wipes Palestinians off the map and menaces Iran. Well, the population of Israel is around 7 million people. The Iranians have 9 million soldiers. Who's going to win that war? The, the Israelis are delusional because you, they're the fourth biggest weapons producer on the planet. And they need to experiment the weapons, so they use the Palestinian children because 5.5 million of the Palestinian adults are in concentration camps with German Shepherd guard dogs patrolling the streets at night. And Benjamin Netanyahu, of course, uh, how many administrations has he been there? And there's a number of times where he, he was told to pull back. He wanted to go in and flatten Gaza. Ga Gaza is not allowed to go out on their boats to go fishing. They're, they're not allowed to go out and pick uh, dates or, or the traditional food. And Israel brought in a thousand ultra Orthodox Jews, ultra Orthodox Jews. These are the headbangers, right? Do you read the Torah and the Talmud? And it says it's legal and or it's acceptable in those doctrines. They'll do it to the Palestinians in a heartbeat. They don't. Well, they don't even have a heart. Those they're nut jobs, eh? Despite Netanyahu, Netanyahu's ongoing destruction, the last vestiges of Israeli's democracy. Well, like. Israel's the Bible's basically the world turns against Israel, God comes down and destroys his, uh, the planet, and the only people that survive are those that are in Jerusalem, which was Palestine, until they showed up, right? No DNA was Israel 3,000 years ago. Well, that DNA is long gone. That genetics is long gone. And so what the best thing that Israel seems to be good at is is creating parts of the Bible and then using that as signs. So the Bible says the world will turn against Israel. So the worst thing you can do is turn against Israel. That's what they want you to do. That's what they're trying to get you to do. And so if they torture the young children from Palestinian, you might speak up. And by your your self prophecy, but uh, Benjamin Netanyahu is Israel nineteen forty eight. He doesn't show you Israel, does he? Well, Israel in nineteen forty eight. He they took all of the Palestinians' land ever since then. But whenever I look at Benjamin Netanyahu, if you paint the mustache on Benjamin Netanyahu, look at his haircut too. It's the opposite way, but it's it's 100%. There's so many similarities. And, and this depiction of the bomb, <coughs> that's from uh, the Bugs Bunny show, right? Wally e. Coyote used to use that depiction. And look how sinister he actually looks. If he doesn't look like Hitler, who does, really? Nuclear test veteran 92 is the first to get a new medal, but it's not 
allowed to see his blood records because they, after nuclear testing, they took blood samples from all the victims they had out there sitting in the fallout, which was the military conscripts. So they're giving them metals. They're giving these guys medals. Wait till you get a look at this. No less than Prince Charles' face on one side and a nuclear symbol on the other side with United Nations branches. Nuclear test medal. Eleven administrations refused to give the victims a medal. Now there's very few of them left. And they won't give them the records of their blood? Why wouldn't you do that? And why would you use the symbol of the, the disgusting extermination machine known as nuclear? The Tamil Nadu cops refused to revoke lookout circular against activists. And now he led a protest back in the at the Kanda Kulam nuclear plant and after Fukushima, right? And so what they done was they arrested 10,000 protesters. Let me see if I can find it, actually. This is a fascinating, or was it 9,000? I can't remember. Yeah, Kanda Lucum. That's right. There we go. So, seven years later, the life's 9,000 people booked for sedition because they protest a nuclear power plant. They were charged with sedition. So, think really, it's hard to comprehend how evil the nuclear industry is and powerful, but look how powerful it was. The 10,000 protesters were charged with sedition. First, they were, had the shit kicked out of them by the despicable Indian police. They use these big hardwood sticks, and they're really good at hurting the victims, which are usually women and children. But that's the same place. That must be the same story. Their crime was sedition, participating in a peaceful protest against establishing a nuclear disease factory in their area. They were, like, they were dependent upon nature, dependent upon the coastline, because there's not much of an industry, right? And this, this power plant showed up and wanted everything, and its emissions destro will destroy everything like the other power plants throughout the country. They have streets in India, right, that are so toxic from the nuclear plants nearby that every household has kids with, uh, that are deformed. Air Force 9th Bomb Squadron commander fired after just a couple of months. Wait, he wasn't big enough killer for you guys or something? When I see stuff like that, I, I get worried because evil doesn't like to take a day off. After officials lost faith in his ability to mass genocide. Malaysia's water and seafood is safe. Uh-huh. And they're showing Fukushima. This is the water of... Uh, mixing station at Fukushima. <coughs> so they're promoting tritium, right? Yeah, tritium. Well, that's reassuring. All the media worldwide is vehemently cutting your throats. As long as people do not spread fake news, we will not be affected. As long as people don't tell the truth, <coughs> you'll get away with your crimes against humanity and the eight million species, is what you meant to say. 
because you're a subhuman species, you refuse to sing. Ah, oh, yes, here we go. Japan's new top diplomat makes international debut. There she is, right alongside the American counterpart. Here she is hanging out, and uh, you see the black guy there with the red tie to your left? Isn't he uh, in charge of nuclear agency, nuclear energy agency, the lobbying group? And look at them. They actually are trying to pretend they're human or got some human attributes. I think it's really stunning how evil, right, they're desperate to be accepted. Right, they, they, they got a crazy education, they work like a murder people to get their jobs and they, they claw their way up to the head of the scumbag pole to get the top jobs and then then they can say see mom I'm actually a good person I'm not a I'm not a monster like you said I was when I was young I'm actually a good person look at me I make more money than you mommy and her mommy says no you're still a scum The minister is also called on other countries to cease any and all assistance, including weapons, to Russia. But Russia, Russia is allowed to take uh, the time to come out and say that they're worried about the tritium instead of talking about the truth. Instead of, see, if Russia had to come out and said, folks, look, that's actually Reactor 3 and 4 at Fukushima that are lying to you about the tritium, people might start liking Russia. You got to be incredibly um, sadistic to claw your way up to those jobs. That's what history clearly shows us. Japan's Fukushima water, uh, they netted a strong endorsement of Japan's Fukushima water release. So strong endorsement that that didn't happen from Canada, France, Germany, and Germany, Italy, the, well, anybody surprised the United Kingdom is in there, the United States? European Union welcoming the safe, transparent, science-based process that's not based on safe or science. Why did why did he work so hard, bring tr so much diligence, regurgitating the word treated and tritium so many times? And all the media worldwide, I wonder, Jesus, what could possibly motivate them to do that? To treat it, water, oh yeah, we will stay and carry out our technical work until the last drop of treated. <laughs> Whoever wrote that must have been, they would have to stop and go pee because they were laughing so hard. Water. Discharged into the sea, the creature added. She's like, oh, he's disgusting. My God, I gotta get soaked and wash my hands right away. Ralphie all grossy. Like when you look at look at it, the smile on his face, for goodness sakes. That's like I just cut a billion people's throat smile right there. And look at her, stone cold killer. Smile, bitch, I'll pay for the stitches. So Korea sends experts to monitor Fukushima release as part of the regular visits. Sends experts to monitor Fukushima release. So Korea. <laughs> My God, they hate us. I had no idea <coughs> that the world would, could organize this kind of contempt against humanity and the species and that all the players would play their part perfectly. It's like, it's like a movie, isn't it? Had he done this and continue to do it since July the 13th is when all that, this new latest, greatest version of the lie came out. And the problem is, and it drives me insane, this facet of it, is that since July the 13th, 
I can't keep up with this story, and therefore I can't get near the headlines of nuclear, which are, but this is the most dangerous thing happening, and we'll, this is the most, I'm sorry, let me rephrase that, and with, I withdraw that comment. This is the most dangerous thing that's ever happened to a planet that I know of. And radiation doesn't go away for millions of years. You'll get it in your body, kills you, you get incinerated, you liberate the radiation back into the environment to look for another victim. They get sick and die, they incinerate them. That's going to go on for millions of generations. And that radiation still be in second gear. Let's go, baby! There's more victims out there. At a glance, enforcement environmental laws in Japan. And so they control the opposition, see? That's what, that's what you're looking at. They're controlling ABC World News Tonight, an anchor to receive the 40th Cronkite Award. Remember Walter Cronkite? Look at us. Really, like, look at that creature. He reported on major events and crises across the world, including Fukushima. Well, I, I guarantee you that that creature never showed you that. And that's why he got the award, see? The word means he's a, he's a stone cold killer. Startup in Japan gears up to make tree sake the next big thing from the nuclear wasteland. Like, for a while they were coming out and saying by uh, by boiling the rice you you liberate the radiation and it goes away. Now the rice is safe. And I used to just frighten the daylight out of me that people might believe that. Like, honey, all you do is boil it like you do when you got, you know, bad water. You can just boil it and the water is safe to drink, sweetie. Let's go buy a 50-pound sack of that leukemia rice and give that a try. And they always like to say triggered by an earthquake and a tsunami, the nuclear meltdown. They got to have... It's so coordinated, it can't be an accident. And then the consensus seems to be that the uh, World Nuclear Lobbying Group writes the articles. They write it, they send it to the World Nuclear Group, they edit it, they send it back, and then the author puts his name on it, and get that's how they make a living, and gets a, a, a prize, let's say, free vacation to Chernobyl. The process of attempting to produce methane gas from biomass, including wood, that contains radioactive substance. Because <laughs> you can't destroy radiation. You can incinerate it at thousands of degree temperatures, you can't destroy it. Boil it in acid, you can't destroy it. In fact, that's what you do. You boil it in acid, at three, you know, citric acid at 3,000 degree Fahrenheit temperatures. Deliberate the plutonium uranium fission products so they can make the mixed oxide fuel. The rest of it gets released into the environment because you can't contain it. They used to pump it underground. And then they realized that the grass was so radioactive, the pollen was so radioactive, we're going to have to find another way. And there's the, he got his hard hat on, thank God. Uh, we want to fall and crack his little pea head open. Sean Burney, you piece of shit, man. You disgusting piece of shit, Sean. Burney, how come you have never, ever showed anybody these pictures? He used to work at Donna Ray, which is going to be about 315 years before they can clean it up, they say. So they're training your children now to work there. Not nuclear academics, nuclear students, but your children. Oh, you don't need an education. We'll teach you. No, no health care for you. <laughs> You're getting cancer and heart problems, liver problems, and lung problems, and respiratory, pituitary, and thyroid, and adrenaline. You're working around nuclear. Make sure you have some kids, though. We need them in the medical system so we can... 
sell our pharmaceuticals later. He has worked in East Asia for 30 years plus and been well acquainted with Fukushima. No, he's not. Well, he is. He's the last person. You can torch, you can waterboard him 198 times. He's like, no, it's, it doesn't look like that at all. <gasps> I'd waterboard him for you. L legally, of course, right? <laughs> you know what the nuclear industry wants to waterboard nuclear opponents. <coughs> the spills. Does it look like that's a spill to anybody? Anybody think that's a spill? How many people would describe that as a spill? If somebody asked them, hey, can you show me a picture of Fukushima? And you brought this up. He was like, well, they had a spill from that. How disrespectful are you to, to even use that word when you're supposed to be the expert? Well, you can't use bananas and potato chips and sunshine because for the first two years after Fukushima, I literally came out and bludgeoned everybody that said the word banana. I, 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 I wasn't nice like I am these days. These days I'm actually pretty nice. <laughs> I'm like the French protesters in real life. Spills. Spills. I don't know how anything spilled out of that. Sean Bundy. Bernie. Spills. Fukushima spills. What's he trying to do in that picture anyway, I wonder? Is he like acting like he he, he has dignity or something? Is that, doesn't that kind of portray that he's like he's in deep thought and He's, he's very worried about Fukushima. He's off the coast of Fukushima in the boat, right there. That's where he's tow. You're not going any closer to Medusa's. The spill. As Greenpeace's spokesperson, which is controlled opposition. Well, it's actually not. I don't know. If, I don't know if opposition is a strong enough word. Controlled opposition is how I refer to Helen Caldicott and Ernie Gunnison and Christopher Busby. That's a whole different creature altogether. Where I'm from, we call them a prick because that's what they are. Speaking of pricks, Grace Stanky, the reigning Miss America, is drumming up support for the use of the atomic energy. There was 100 girls, at least 75 was way prettier than her and incredibly educated. She's a first year student for nuclear, is drumming up support for the use of the atomic energy. I'd for Gracie to go down to Fukushima and tell everybody how wonderful those 30 million one ton bags are no, 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 actually, I got something even better. I wanted to go down and write on all of these bags how, shout from the rooftops how wonderful these bags are, these 30 million one-ton bags. And go down and mark on it, rather, that Dana is wrong. Get all your fellow nuclear scum at your university class and go down and mark on all these millions and millions of one-ton bags that Dana's wrong. And, and stanky good. Dana bad. She's spent the rest of her life and she won't be able to mark on very many of them because there's 30 million of them. And she's amazed. She knows she's amazed she won. She had no hope of winning. There's people here with bachelor degrees over and over and over. Incredibly wonderful souls. She won because she was promoting nuclear. She said it's the industry that saved my dad twice from cancer. Well, you think he, you think if it didn't save him twice from cancer, you moron. <laughs> 
That's the most ludicrous statement imaginable. Saved him twice. From <laughs> he got it again. It's like the fucking flu, I tell you. <laughs> Don't worry, there's a third and fourth time coming in that story. Look at her. I had no chance of winning. So they said nuclear, like, they're like, we like her. We like her. Can you do anything? Well, I got a little desk on my bed where I used to keep all my boogers when I was young. Don't tell Dad he got upset. <coughs> but I like it. Why isn't this being shouted from the rooftops? Nuclear. <laughs> why, why ain't this being shouted from the rooftops? The food was banned for a decade because it's not like a banana. How long before she goes out and says it's like a banana? And that's one of the few pictures where she actually looks reasonable. Most of you know there's something fucking wrong with her. There's a few of them like that out there, isn't it? I got another one there that scares me every time I see her. Hang on. And just thank God every day. Jesus. That freaks me out every time I see her, too. This is a maniac. That's what that creature right there is. She, uh, environmental progress, she's a terrorist. Madison, the monster hilly. She campaigned for a green nuclear radioactive earth wasteland deal. A green nuclear deal. And she almost looks human in that picture, but when you see her, like, she doesn't even know how to smile. she got to wear jewelry like that to make herself feel human. Never mind. Atoms for the future. <laughs> There's tons out there now we don't need anymore. Stop her already. Every fuel pool is hemorrhaging these atoms for the future genocide into the environment. I had to translate it as usual. Atoms for the future, Italy. At uh, 67th International Degenerate General Conference. What are they cooking up now, I wonder? Until Friday, till tomorrow, the 29th. So thank God I gave him a little mention. It has the mandate, the International Atomic Energy Agency mandate is to guarantee and spread the genocide of nuclear technology in favor of sustainable development, human health, or uh, international cooperation. Listen, the last thing they're interested, Adams for the future, the last thing they're going to consider is human health. If they were worried, if the International Atomic Energy Agency was worried about human health, the first thing they're going to do is ban every nuclear power plant on the planet because it's surrounded by farms. I'm not going to go down that road with you, but that's a crisis every day on our planet because the food gets moved out. All nuclear power plants are surrounded by farms on purpose to shift the radioactive materials somewhere else, preferably in your children. And so you see a lot of cereals and stuff grown around these disease factories. And then just a f not very much, just a tiny, tiny amount is very dangerous. Irreversible heart damage for children of 50 beckles a kilogram. So you can put 200 million beckles per kilogram or 200 million atoms on the head of a needle. And so imagine how small 50 of them are. And then because nuclear power plants are hemorrhaging radiation nonstop from the fuel pool, and the older the plant, the more fuel, that which means more splitting atoms, and, and that's released. Each fuel pool is uh, boiling about 120,000 liters up to skinny stacks. 
and they are they're very tall compared to the cooling towers and the idea is they know a lot of it's going to fall close by remember after fukushima they were like well a lot of it's uranium plutonium they're heavy elements they won't travel very far so you don't have to worry about it in north america the the, 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 the scum were all over the place with this very calm cool and collect and reassuring actually i was like what the fuck are you talking about the atom, like the uranium, the iodine, the plutonium, the curium, they're all the same fucking weight. And Fukushima, the first 40 days, just sprayed salt water on it. So you created this sulfur peroxide hydrogen buckyball effect where you, you liberated the sulfur at these enormous temperatures. And the sulfur gets like a spherical shape to it, like a soccer ball, a structure. But it's not, it's not, it's not a, like a, a solid piece, it's a structure. And it's able to ingest the hot particles that are you know, the many, the thousand fission products, isotopes. And then it's a super hot isotope that's very mobile, not solutable typically in water, and is able to travel long distances uh, with little effort. They're like little nuclear engines because they're pulsing energy at the speed of light every second. And because they're so small, they're like little nuclear engines and they go looking for victims. Anything with replicating souls will do just fine. And almost every single nuclear power plant worldwide is surrounded by firms so they can poison you. That's the International Atomic Energy Agency's quite criteria for building a nuclear power plant in your country. Well, have you got any prime farmland? Well, you got to put it there. Because you know prime farmland, you're going to have a water source. Well, that's a pretty good spot, don't you think? You're going to have to work with us. If you want nuclear, you've got to build it in your prime farmland. And you can only grow certain crops. We'll dictate what they're going to be. That's what the International Atomic Energy Agency has been doing since their inception. And the bigger the lie, the better it is. Hey, nothing got out, only 2.2 grams. It's equal to about... One sixteenth of a piece of that coin each year from a thousand tanks. Don't worry, it's natural. Don't listen to Dana. Don't just don't listen to Dana. Listen to us, and everything will be fine. The horror of this legacy is shouldn't be underestimated. So we got the truck fixed. What a disaster. And thank you everybody over the last month and a half that contributed to this nightmare. Nightmare's not quite over. We got the truck back. I still gotta do the tie rod ball joint on the passenger side. The transfer case working great. Got a little vibration. I think that was the shaft, the older shaft, where the other guys put the universal joints in. I put it on myself in the pouring rain in desperation to get the boat back in the water to carry out research. So we got 16 days of research like that in before the truck gave up the ghost. But we were able to quantify that Fukushima is an extinction event. It's been a horrible struggle. Horrible struggle. Terrifying struggle. And I'll see everybody on Sunday unless there's something urgent shows up. Have a great day. Thank you again, everybody. We're going to start raising money again. I'm flat broke. And uh, we got to put fuel in the boat. we got to get back out on the water and finish off the season with research. At least do that. we got to come out and curb stomp this despicable fucking industry as much as we can. My table is loaded with shit. And I'm in dick deep every day with it. And proud to bring the fight have a great day have a great week and we'll see you on monday sunday you might get a live stream tomorrow if i'm on the ocean from the cell phone right i can still do it from the cell phone have a great day